agitation the person asked buhari agitation is this an indication that mr buhari supports violence these are western foreign analysts telling the whole world that this man is a violent criminal that some of you would not listen you will not have it against this background we have the likes of um uh today Miyetiala, that raped and killed our mothers. That raped a woman to death. Miyetiala raped a woman to death in a boy. You know what they said? Southeast governors committed to Nigeria's unity. Now you know where your problems lie. These are the issues bedeviling us. And these are the things that we are working to make our people working very hard to let their friends understand that these people you call your governors, that they are there to destroy us as a people, they won't understand it. It is now happening. It is now happening. The time now is approximately 9 p.m. in just three minutes past nine in the evening, and we are proceeding with it. We are continuing with this very broadcast because we are heading somewhere. We want to build, should I say, the context, and then we land. You now know that IPOB is fighting very hard for you. Even Jubril opened his mouth to acknowledge it. You now also know that Buhari, before he died and Jubril took over, they were working for what is happening today. That was why they appointed Tanko Muhammad to be doing what he's doing today, conversing for Sharia. The same thing they did in 1812, in 1802-1812 to the Hausa people is what they're doing to everybody now, as I warned you. That time they were fighting for corruption and the internment of Sharia. The same thing they are doing today. But some of you are too blind, you cannot see. But thankfully, you have IPOB. Alerting you to the dangers that you face every day that you wake up in the zoo. Do you know that when Buhari was alive, he never even acknowledged the existence of ISIS? This government have done a very good job protecting. I want to prove that Buhari is part and parcel of ISIS, Boko Haram, and all the rest of them. They have done a very good job, and some of you are very blind; you cannot see. Uh, only a few days ago, what did they say that um, uh, Boko Haram is no longer operating? Isn't that what they said? That Boko Haram no longer operates in the zoo. <laughs> mm. We know about uh, people who have been beheaded. Killed every blessed day. We hear about something happening in the zoo. It's no longer news. But I also want to tell you that this is news. In case you have forgotten. I want you to go back to your system and please Google Boko Haram names Buhari, five others as mediators. Now, if you don't know somebody, can you name the person as a mediator? The world is blind. They try to remove this news many times. But we saved it. Because we know a day like this will come when the world will be trying to excuse evil, when Britain will be trying to cover up evil and what Satan is doing in the zoo. It is here. Listen carefully to this very news, please. Go and Google it. How can Boko Haram name Buhari as a chief negotiator if they don't know who he is? The man who campaigned for Sharia law to be imposed. A man who said they are in agitation. A man that made Western media to question the sanity of Nigerians, saying to them, how can you even allow this man to be on ballot paper? That said he's agitating for Sharia. He's committed to Sharia. They'll do everything to bring in Sharia. I read on Vanguard newspaper, and they read very well. The leadership of Jama Atu Ali Suna Lida Awati Wal Jihad. That's their name they are known as Boko Haram, has named the former head of state and presidential candidate of CPC, then, that was the party from General Muhammad Buhari, among six prominent northerners, always northerners, always Polani, to mediate the group and the federal government. Are you listening? Some of you, are you listening? This is the man that is the granddaddy of terrorists. That was why they named him. That was why they named him as their chief negotiator. It's there for the whole world to see. And I'm sure tomorrow people will come to argue very blindly. 
Even I know that even Facebook is helping them, but they will never succeed. You know they will never, ever, ever succeed. Never. We are telling our people about these dangers before it confronts them. Buhari was invited, but not invited, discussed with Boko Haram. They named him and they gave Jonathan conditions, which I'm sure some of you well know. And Jonathan said, no, he wasn't going to accept it. And have you also forgotten? Listen very carefully. You know the damage that Boko Haram have caused and all the terrorists from Fulani North. You know what they have done, don't you? I also want you to Google this. Very, very important. Buhari calls terrorists misguided brothers. They are his brothers. Urges them to embrace peace. They are his brothers. Terrorists are his brothers. It is here. Go and Google it. Buhari calls terrorists misguided brothers. And people are still questioning why Boko Haram is still there. Why you have ISIS. Why you have um, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda in West Africa. In the Maghreb. Why you have Fulani headsmen. When the chief terrorist is the one who is in power. They are his brothers. He opened his mouth and said they are his misguided brothers. And why are they misguided? I'm going to prove it to you tonight. You know why they are misguided Boko Haram? Because Buhari told Boko Haram when he was alive to attack military and Christians. And Shekau said no. He went and formed another group. I told you they formed another group. Before, in my broadcast, I said they formed another group. Some of you were not listening. I want to prove tonight that they formed, this Buhari formed another group of terrorists. I want to prove it to you. I'm, 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 I'm good. You, 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 have, you can see how they started with their Sharia. How Sharia was supreme. How they read election. Used violence. Decimated and cowed the Christian populations of the Middle Belt. The same thing they are doing to us today. Destroy. Bring in army. Operation. Pattern dance one. Pattern dance two. Pattern dance three. Pattern dance four. They will keep doing it to intimidate you. To have fear in you. So once they say, we are building a mosque, you say, oh, please go ahead and build. But don't kill me. He called, can you think of somebody calling a terrorist group my misguided brothers? Can you imagine that? That's what he called them. They are his misguided brothers. And some of you are still embracing the zoo called Nigeria. Some of you think that the zoo will somehow make your life better. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. The things that you need to know. What, what am I going to tell you? Let me tell you also that they are all in it together. Buhari, Abak Yari, El Rufai, Sultan of Sokoto. All these people are in this killing game together. All of them, they are in it together. Some of you have forgotten, haven't you? Because you have a very shallow memory. You are Nigerians, you don't reason very well. Very shallow memory some of you have. I want to tell you about a man called El Rufai and the Kaduna killings. Have you forgotten? Go and Google it. He's from Punch newspaper. El Rufai and Kaduna killings. These are the people you call politicians, uh, our leaders. They are the terrorists in office. These are pure terrorists in office. But you don't know, do you? And we are here to tell you. Boko Haram are your brothers. They are your brothers. Boko Haram, they named you as the chief negotiator. You know nothing about them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai made a startling revelation last week. Not this, I'm, I'm telling, when was this story published? It was on December the 9th of 2016, three years ago. That diminutive uh, short devil called um pinchami called uh, is like a, a pygmy El Rufai. he made a question last week he's the he publicly admitted that he sent listen carefully to this so-called nigerians listen very well some of you are daft daft beyond repair daft beyond recognition this UG, daft this is a man that paid terrorists El Rufai. From his own mouth, he said he sent emissaries to give money from Nigeria, from Central Bank of Nigeria, 
to Fulani terrorists who had been killing people, mass killing mostly Christians in southern Kaduna in retaliation for alleged deaths of their members and cows. You remember when this man also tweeted that uh, every Fulani killed is a debt or is a death owed that they will all be paid back. Then went to Central Bank of Nigeria, brought out millions of dollars and gave to Fulani headsmen who are killing people in one Nigeria. And you're telling me you love Nigeria. You're telling me Nigeria is your country. Unbelievable. 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 Now listen to what the governor said. El Rufai, a governor, he is vying to be president. And I'm sure there are some people from Biafra and the Igbos especially who out of hunger, you know, go, go out of hunger, out of hunger and no shame will take money from this diminutive devil to go and campaign for him. I know some of them will. They are evil that way. No shame, no class, no honor and no dignity. Do you know what he said? I, I said go and Google it. I don't know why I'm reading this thing. So go and Google it yourself. El Rufai and Kaduna killings. These are those you vote for to be in power or those that rig themselves into power. This is how lives are as Nigerians. This is how hopeless and useless some of you are. I thank you. I'm a, I'm a Biafran. I'm telling you. I thank God in heaven and created a Biafran and I'm raising the way that I do. Unbelievable. The same thing they are trying to do to us, they doing, it was what they did to Yorubas in, in, in Fara State in Elorin. They subdued the Yoruba, they subdued them, put them under the, under the rug. Put them under the rug and said they are nothing. You rule when we say you rule. That's why it's only been Obasanjo, nobody else. When Abdiola came, they said no. You're a Muslim, but no, you're, you're a Blair Rebbe or whatever they call them. You're under, you're under Nitos, you cannot do anything. And Obasanja agreed to give them Sharia outside the constitution and they made him the president. Now you understand it. Now you know why they hate IPOB. Now you understand why they think they can shut us down, but they cannot. It is impo impossible. They know they are fighting a losing battle. They know they can never defeat IPOB. It is impossible because we keep exposing them. The whole world will hear about The whole world will know what Elufai has done. They cannot cover it with bribery. It's not possible. It's there in black and white. Listen to what El Rufai said. You know, Nigerians, I don't, I don't know what is wrong with them. I, don't, I can't understand those people, honestly. He said, so many of these people were killed, cattle lost, and they organized themselves and came back to revenge. Ah, Fulani came back to revenge. There are one or two that ask for monetary compensation. As they're killing people, they say to the government, if you don't give me money, money, I won't stop. I'll keep killing. The government then ran to the bank and brought money from the national coffers. The same oil money. That's some idiots that claim they're from Nigeria that will say is our money. They're using it to pay for the terrorists, to buy more weapons and then come to buy us a state and wreak havoc. You see the way it works? Only Biafra can save you. Only it doesn't matter what you do. You can dance from here to heaven and back. Only Biafra can save. Only Biafra can save the Christians in the middle belt. Only Biafrans can save everybody everywhere in the zoo. If you don't want this jihad to swallow you, if Jonathan doesn't want this jihad to swallow him, he needs to support Biafra. If you don't want to be consumed in this rage of the Fulani, marked in islamic extremism then you must join ipob you must join biafra or else you're finished remember i told you they will use it they will dump you i told the shomole they will use it they will dump you the same thing will happen to tinubu they will use it they will dump you and your eyes will then open you will know how foolish you have been they are killing people and as the Fulanis are slaughtering christians in southern kaduna bbc did not write about it no comment, no, no send their crews there, no, no CNN, no ABC, no CNBC, nothing. They kept slaughtering. And as they are slaughtering innocent people, they said to Kaduna State Governor, give us money. If you don't give us money, we'll stop. And the idiot is proudly saying, as they were asking for money, I gave them money. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
Do you know that El Rufai admitted to numbing terrorists full enhancement that claimed the fourth most deadly terror group in the world? A governor that is aspiring to be president, a Sharia advocate, an Islamist said, I know them. That nobody is bothered, no persecution, no nothing. Just like that, because you're in Nigeria and they're the ones ruling. And you call yourself a proud Nigerian. And I say shame unto you. Nigeria, they have an anti-terror law in Nigeria that says that aiding and abetting terrorism is a crime. Isn't there? Wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are, in this coronavirus infested planet, we welcome you to a very special Radio Biafra live transmission, hosted by my humble self. Nam the Kano, the leader of IPOB all over this world. 
and by the very special grace of Elohim, Chikukika Biyama Priminyanine, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra, not minding this very debilitating pandemic, not minding the pain and the hardship that people are encountering all over the world, particularly Biafrans. I will say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, irrespective of where you are. You are always in our thoughts and in our prayers. We continue to pray ceaselessly, not just to ask for the grace and the preservation of God Almighty in heaven, but that we may be showed a way out of this very darkness, that we may be guided out of this very pestilence, that this very family, this very Biafran, this very IPOB might endure to the glory of Biafra and the eternal adoration of the God that have set us on this very path. Therefore, as we preach this very gospel, as we begin to outline what we are all going to do to remain safe in the midst of this very deadly pandemic, I ask you to please tell those who are around you if it is safe to do so. Inform friends, inform relatives and inform families all over the world to tune in to CHK 102.1 or 102.2 in some areas it is 102.3 this very broadcast this evening is cast simultaneously on satellite we are on Facebook on my page Martin Namdekanu we are on Radio Biafra page we tried to go into Radio Biafra London and they refused. But we must preach this very gospel. We must ensure the safety of Biafrans all over the world. We must take care of our vulnerable at home. We must make sure that the hospitals are equipped and staffed adequately to deal with what is to come. It is no longer a question of if, but when. This very disaster will strike and strike in a very deadly fashion. We must be prepared. We cannot afford to take any chances. We are prayerful, that is true. We are the children of light, that also is not in dispute. We are the chosen and the beloved of the Creator in heaven, that no one can doubt no question also but we must take precaution we must do what is right not just to safeguard ourselves but to also be mindful of the fragility of the health of our parents and our grandparents because we do not want to bury them in mass therefore this broadcast this evening is very very vital it is very very important that we not only listen but take the advice we are about to be given very very seriously because we thought this very pandemic this very strain of corona will just give you a mild symptom of flu and it will disappear but it seems to me that those that designed this very deadly virus may have some ulterior motive. Before we proceed this evening, we must hand over our proceedings to the Most High Chukwokika Biyama 
Elohim Purimi Hanina to remember all those who are suffering, those who cannot go to work, those who are shut out from every means of livelihood, those who are in distress because their loved one has either passed on or they are fighting for their dear lives in hospital. We remember all of them this very evening. We must bow our heads and we must pray for those who do not understand the Igbo language, for those who may become perplexed at the language of our prayer. You must bear with us. We pray in the language of heaven. If you are privileged to be sat or kneeling in front of the creator of the heavens and this very earth, you will hear the angels speak Hebrew language. You will hear them adore and worship Elohim Chukwokikabiyama in the language of the ancients, the very oldest language on the face of this very planet. Therefore, we must pray. Onye bonane anachi eze bubede ngozi maru mbe biyebi onye hunanya ya sachiri hani nke yomo ya kereke chine kena nke muwa na madu na uisi alanye onya ni ne bulia hanso yelu Onye ndi muozi na boche ze yo kri kri ni me li gwe we na se no den so. Ndi yo kenyo ruwa buwa na no we na tum ole dona la. Na se na nso, nso, nso ka ji hefa de. Na ni we na uisi ala nyo hi. Buena si si te ni ya maragi chine ke nan ki gwe ni ya naka ke mende ke. O wagi mbo bulo ji we buro bi mno begi. Ni ke we ri we we po chapunde ke se bu bede ngozi. Anyi we na nyo ka ka uchi te ke nan ke bore de ngozi we che kwande ke bo mo ke bonde bi afra no wanine. Ani wena yogi ni sindi ku nandibe. Ani wena po kwa hanso wonye bini gwe ni sindi yogo. Ani wena yogi eze bubede ngozi we segi piko cheta ku Israel. Ma cheta ku andino na Amerika wena ta huvu chetu mune anyi nino nitili. Wena gabi genhe ni medi chiche. Ani wene che tandino na spero, ni me li gwe ki we me le hamara. Umo gino na jamuni, umo ndino na China, chine ke nanki gwe. Ufari ni me hana na Singapore, umo gino na India, umo gino na South Africa. Hane beri ne di chicho nye ke li gwe maka o lo wani wena. Yoli we rendu ni di etwa we nye feno badaraka ye. Nasi yo ne puri mi ye ni ne. Kandu na ki we zuo ke ni mendu wani. Ki we zopo tande ye. Kandi di etwa we burende dendo. Na langende dendo we hombi afra o nye wem na chine ke na. Ni hinan nam nan nye ma hapu wo. O nye wem bini di we pe mumpa. Sina bi afra ya beri na ben kanyi. Nwe na yoge ese. Bu bede ngosi Ni hano wanine na unwe bere hi O ni me li gwe bi kwe ki we me na nye bere Ki we nyanye mami he ma nyanyo gugu isi We wezu gara nye kuru nantamu Ki we wezu gi he jo ni ne We nyanye huna nyanye unye mwem na chine ke na ki we ropo tara nye Kisi we meko si miru ye weke wabu o. Umu ni we si ni mea we gafe. Mbe hasi na kafe o nanke be. Nke gyo uwe yi we su gara hani mea. We na gafe. He we si nuzabizi yi. Iwe ropo tawa honzo. E bonzo na obe ye. 
We must proceed to preach this very gospel. And our people must listen and listen very attentively because coronavirus is not a joke. You must assimilate and absorb everything that I'm going to tell you because it is based on the very finest and soundest medical advice available around the world at the moment. Thoroughly and carefully researched in order to ensure that Biafrans all over the world come out of this pandemic intact. That we may all live to see the promise of God in our lives because Biafra is the only thing that matters. Wealth and riches do not matter. The only thing of concern to those of us who are called both in flesh and in spirit to restore Biafra. The only thing that drives us every blessed day. The only determination that we possess. The only thing that we get out of the bed in the morning for is to see the promise of God upon our lives, the restoration of Biafra. And I am deeply troubled and distressed about what we observe on a daily basis. This morning we are being told that the United States of America, where incidentally there are a lot of Biafrans, that that very country of God is under very serious pressure to contain this virus with very limited success, I must say. We must understand that it is for our own benefit that we follow every guideline being issued by a government, be they at the center, be they at the local level, you must, you must rigorously and diligently abide by whatever instructions you are given. Even when that instruction means that your freedom and movement is curtailed, 
you must adhere to it. Very, very important it is for your own survival. When this very virus started, a lot of people, including myself, we thought it was another version or variation, or should I say variant, I have to be grammatically correct, of SARS. You remember the SARS, the, the, the swine flu and all the rest of them. But this one is more sinister. Very, very sinister and deadly. The rate of contamination, the way it propagates, the way it, tra it transmits from one person to the other is frightening. I was one of those that believed that the media was trying to scare us. I was one of those that gravitated towards the notion that this could all be one giant stage managed event to try to raise the stocks of the pharmaceutical companies. I was one of those that believed that perhaps this was something they designed and released in order to scare us into some kind of unconformity. But that is not the case. This very virus is very, very deadly, I assure you. The essence of this very program this evening is to drive home the importance of personal hygiene, the importance of social distancing, very, very important that you distance yourselves from one another. The essence of confinement at home and also quarantine, very, very critical. And I say this because in Africa, all over Africa, most of our mothers, our fathers, those in their late 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and upwards, we predominantly suffer from diabetes. Diabetes. For some bizarre and perverse reason, most of the deaths recorded abroad, most of the people that have died so far from this very illness, a sizable, or should I say, significant proportion of them have diabetes. That is why we must take this very, very seriously. Because this very virus kills people in a very nasty way. There was a clip I was watching a live interview with a patient in a hospital. He said that this disease actually makes you feel that sleeping is better. Remember that thing that malaria does to you? You remember malaria. When malaria comes, it will be pushing you to go and sit under the sun, to go near a fire, to receive warmth. Do you remember? That thing is actually killing you. It's not allowing your body to develop its own immune system to fight back. That is what malaria does. Lures you into a, a false sense of security that sunlight is good for you. If you remember, that is what this virus does to people. It makes you feel like sleeping is very good. Lying down is wonderful. And I regret to say this. In very small number of people have those the doctors gave you know the um, the machine that helps people to breathe. Because I have to be as, uh, as descriptive as possible this evening. You know the equipment that you see people wear that helps them to breathe. Once you go in there, very few people come out. Because they have not yet realized that the best way to treat these people is by getting them to be mobile. This is the evidence coming from patients. This very afternoon, they call them respirators, for some of you who are looking for the name. We cannot afford to get to that very critical position. Because if we allow ourselves to become contaminated, if we allow ourselves to become infected through our carelessness, if we allow our parents to become infected as a result 
of our own carelessness. Can you imagine or dream of where we can get 20,000 respirators from? The machine that will help people to breathe. Which is what most orthodox doctors are going for. Where are we going to get the expertise, or should I say the expert medical personnel to attend or to tend to nearly say roughly, let's say 200,000 people. Most of us live in very congested, densely populated areas. In Onisha, in Aba, not so much as Enugu, in Lagos, in Kanu, some areas also in Abuja. What do you think will happen should this virus get into those places? Look at what is happening in Italy. Italy is one of the most advanced countries in the world. Look at what is happening in New York of all places. New York and Texas in America, they have the two most advanced, advanced in the whole world, more than any other country. They have the most advanced healthcare, the most advanced medical services on this very earth. Texas and New York. Look at what is happening in New York. I couldn't believe that a doctor said that they're having to make a choice as to who dies and who lives. That is how difficult it is. It is not hearsay. It is not something people watching this. I heard the doctor giving interview from inside the hospital. And to make, you know, to even bring the horror closer home. There's a place called Excel Center in London for those of you that know it. They are preparing. It, it, it won't be actually a surprise, you know, for people to hear that the British Army is um, involved in the building of a field hospital because in the zoo, the army is involved in, in arresting people and in stockpiling food for themselves. That's what Burata is doing. But in the UK, they went to Excel Center to build 14,000 14, beds. And the funniest thing is that it's not that they're building a field hospital. Also nearby, nearby, they are building a mortuary. In other words, all the finest statisticians you have in the Western world, all the finest brains that you have, are basically projecting that at least 16% of those that we admitted are going to die. That is why, as, as well as building a field hospital, they are also building a morgue, a mortuary, to take people in. I would not be that distressed nor disturbed if in Nigeria and across Africa and in Biafra land there are good hospitals, good health care. We don't have any. Previously, we also thought that because this virus cannot survive in temperatures above 28 degrees, that somehow the sun back home will kill it. May, probably that is why it's slowing it down. But the difficulty is that most people have it and they do not know they have it. And they can. the worst thing about this very virus is that they can transmit it to other people without even having or feeling ill or any form of sickness. Without showing any of the symptoms. They can still transmit and infect other people. Why am I elaborating for the simple reason that it is very, very important we stop traveling. Very, very important we stop traveling. Very, very important that we enforce self-confinement. Now we'll get to the, uh, to the very obvious fact that people don't have food to eat and all the rest of it and what we are doing about it as IPOB. Because you don't expect us to keep quiet. I am concerned about our people and we need to do something about it. This is the time to jettison and abandon any kind of um, misunderstanding, disagreement, 
rivalry or should I say let us just leave that misunderstanding I think that that's better we must come together as a people to try to defeat this very virus once we've defeated this very virus we can go back to doing what we do but right now there is need for coming together of our people from all walks of life every persuasion to allow our race the biafran race to emerge from this very scourge unscathed or else disaster awaits people let me just tell you this there was an information published by Britbat yesterday Forget all the nonsense they're telling you that um, it has uh, no new cases reported in China. That is rubbish. Because if you ask the Chinese telecom, ask China telecom, they will tell you that from December of 2019 to last week Sunday, 20 million mobile phone users in China have gone off the grid. I repeat, 20 million. We know that people can have two mobile phones, they can have three, they can have four. We know that people move for one reason or the other. But if you if you can have this in mind, that we live in a world where everything, every transaction is done via your mobile phone. I mean everything. Nobody goes to the bank anymore. Everything is done via your mobile phone in advanced countries. To have 20 million people missing from the list of China Telecom. This used to be previous mobile phone owners. Tells you about the enormity and the gravity of this problem. In countries that are, that are democracies around the world, they are far more open, far more transparent. They allow questions to come and they answer as honestly as they can. But in countries like China, where there is no openness, you cannot take what they are telling you that they have successfully contained this very virus. They have not. I repeat, they have not. People are dying all over the place. These are in countries with advanced medical systems. Imagine what will happen in places like Hajigunle. Just think about it. People go to Luth in Yaba, Lagos University. People go there to die. Ask yourself this question. Where are you going to go to, to get treatment? Should you become infected? Where on earth in the zoo can you go to? That is why you must stop traveling. We know in terms of livelihood, and some people will say, if I'm going to die through coronavirus, let it be. But there is no food. And as I said, we are doing something about that. I will get to that later. But for now, please, halt every non-essential travel. Stop going to the market. Any time there is a restriction, please, please adhere and abide by it. That tells you how serious this is. It is not a joke. In the advanced parts of the world, where they have, basically, in my view, people that actually made this very virus, they have lost 22,000 people. 22,000 dead already, officially. I know people are dead in their millions in China. I forget what they're, what they're saying. And they claim that the bulk of the new cases being recorded, as we all know, they are all outside the epicenter, the former origin of this very virus, which is in the Wuhan um, 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 city in China. All the new cases are outside. And I say this to you. The person who was actually saying this or uh, that gave the interview from his hospital bed is a black American, for your information. So all this idea that it doesn't affect black people is false. There is a saying that um, perhaps those that took 
the the you know the tuberculosis vaccine that they may be considered safe we don't know the best thing to do is to take precaution just take precaution you must wash your hands not when you're outside after touching your face you come and start washing your hands by then it's too late try as much as possible it is for me it is almost impossible i've been confined to home in one little space don't touch your face when you go outside you must wash your hands rigorously the latest scientific research is that this very virus a lot of people get infected not through what they breathe in but the surfaces they have touched and close proximity to people that already have it that is something you must understand very very carefully so if you have that what is it called is it called n92 or n9 uh, gauze on your nose you think you're protected then you're not well you are not protected this infection comes via your hands the palm of your hands mostly because you touch surfaces tables railings you know when you get into a bus you have to hold on to somewhere where the conductor have actually put his hands before you put it there you are going to become infected sooner rather than later and the best thing for us to do is to avoid getting this very deadly infection because we do not have the hospitals that can sustain the pressure that will come as a result of this very outbreak very very important you know places like united kingdom that are advanced the national health service very advanced 477 people and counting dead including a 21 year old girl with no history no previous history of any medical condition none whatsoever she just died that is how deadly this very disease is and when bill gates said he is worried for africa i am also worried i am worried for africa that is true worried for humanity that is true but my primary concern is the people of biafra that is my primary constituency and this virus if it is found to be as potent in africa as is proven in asia in europe and in north america then we are in for one almighty mess the best way to prevent this very calamity is by us following every medical directive from the world world health organization but sometimes I wonder how can people follow these directives from what World Health Organization when there is no light? Do you see why we fight for Biafra? People, the 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 Janjaweed, the presidency of the zoo, they call them presidency because Buhari is not there. Is a is a high hand a hired hand from Sudan. They call themselves presidency. So any idiot can speak and it's presidency. Whereas in America, when is the president speaking? You see Trump. Everywhere else in the world, a prime minister is speaking. You see Boris Johnson. You see the prime minister of the country. You see the president of the country. But he's in the zoo. It's called presidency. So anybody can appear. I say presidency. We are in one almighty mess. And the zoo. See what we call Nigeria Zoo? And the zoo cannot save you. They can't save themselves. Abba Piari and Jubril, that they call Buhari, they are not in Abuja. If they are in Abuja, they should show us where they are. They can never show you. You have seen videos and clips of patients in Italy, in America, everywhere. The wife of the Canadian Prime Minister has coronavirus. I think the EU President, Juncker, I think he has coronavirus. They tell you. You can see them. But I am telling you right now that the zoo is non-functional. Nigeria is not functioning. It has no de facto president who is Abak Yari. There is nobody else in charge. A majority of them are contaminated. They, they have all infected themselves. Nigeria right now has no government. It has no senate. 
in, in, in the U.S., you can see the Senate voting through a stimulus package for the economy. In Nigeria, that is known. Has uh, the House of Reps all they have all run away? Senate is the same thing they have all run away. There is nobody in charge. The only people in charge in the zoo is Buratai and this Janjaweed army. I will also come to that later. That is the mess that we are facing. That is why we must all take precaution of the very highest order in basically to ensure that we survive. That we get through this. It will come to pass eventually. But sadly people are going to die. A lot will have to die. Unless, I repeat, unless we do something now. And what is that thing we are going to do? We are going to make sure as IPOB that one hospital is designated in to start with in every state capital of Biafra land. And we also need to include a do state as well in this because we have a lot of Edo people who are in IPOB all over the world and contributing very generously to what we are doing. We are going to have, Chief Edosium will expand on this on, on Sunday during our live broadcast. Hospitals in every state of Biafra land, specialists, every state will nominate one hospital that IPOB is going to be in charge of that IPOB will equip and make sure that they have everything necessary to take care of those who are ill. Every state will have to nominate one hospital. We know there is no social welfare, of course, that is none. So I am directing IPOB, that is why we are everywhere, IPOB family units in every hamstead, I did not say village, I said every hamstead, every street in Biafra land, the IPOB there should prepare because we are going to open food, or should I say soup kitchens, for people. Because there are those that go out and sell their vegetables, they sell their onions, they sell their tomatoes, they come back home, and, you know, that is how they make income for the day, to survive. If people are going to be confined at home, then we must make sure that they don't die of starvation. We are not very rich, but we do have ways and ideas and the requisite intellect to be able to provide for our people. We are going to do the best we can by the special grace of God in heaven. If we all cooperate, and be, or should I say, remain as generous as we have always been. We always say, one the number one one This is not the time for theory, nor time for rhetoric. We need to translate all those things we say all the time about love thy neighbor. We must now prove it. We may even have to feed those who are not IPOB in the process, but this is something we are going to do. And efforts are on the way to make sure that this happens in Biafra land. Every civilized country in the world is feeding their people. Some of you may have heard about the stimulus package. They announced in the USA, in England, in the UK, sorry, everywhere around the world. Even today, Japan also announced one. Now you can see the benefit of being an advanced country, an advanced economy. You can now see why we want Biafra. Because in Biafra, we would have had all these contingencies built in into the fabric of society itself. So we can always go back, go to the reserves, get, they are begging for 222 billion. So where would they get money to feed the people? If people go to work, millions will die. You need to confine people at home. But how are you going to feed them? Anyway, as I said before, my concern is for Biafran people, and we are going to do the best that we can. As I said, Chike Doziem, our head of DOS, will outline the details on Saturday. We are still working on it. I am still working on it. It is very, very important that, as I said earlier, we maintain the very highest standards of hygiene, that we don't travel. These are the key issues here. Don't travel. 
self quarantine remain at home even when there is no announcement from the government about a lockdown please lock yourselves down at least for four weeks to allow this wave to pass that is how plagues behave this pestilence it will come it will pass if we avoid it we will all be alive to continue to agitate for Biafra to come. These are the things that we are going to do. Prayers alone cannot save us. Prayer and fasting cannot save us. I believe in, in miracle more than anybody else. I do. But our prayer, the prayer that I pray every day is for God to show us a way out of this. Not for God to kill Corona because I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to work. It won't work. Corona is there already. What we are now going to do is to manage our way out of this very crisis. And together as one people, as one nation, we are going to do it. The Nigeria that some of you belong to is an abject failure. They have failed. What is happening all over the world has actually put Africa to shame. All those years of dictatorial rule, all those years of looting, all those years of telling people that you have good hospitals, that you are fighting corruption. You know, that's, that's the thing. I, I don't like Corona, to be honest with you. It has exposed quite a lot. But I still do not like it. I do not like it. And I, as we're on air, they're still killing people. Even the military is killing people in Bielsa. In Bielsa um, community. Two people dead. We'll get to that later. You know, there is something about the Janja. Um, people say this is not the night to make political speeches, but I have to. Because it's the truth. What I am about to tell you is out there everywhere. But there is no way anybody can deny this. You know that this God we serve in heaven is miraculous. Do you know this tiny virus, Corona? It is the surest way to expose corrupt regimes all over the world. It is a very bad virus, yes. But it is now exposing corruption that otherwise people won't be aware of. Let me explain this to you. This is according to Nigeria's budget. So it is not made up figures. Nobody is lying against anybody. 2015, when the late Buhari was alive, in his first budget, they appropriated 3.94 billion naira for Asorok Clinic. Listen carefully, please. 3.94 billion. 2015. 2016, 3.87 billion. 2017, 3.20 billion. 2018, 1.03 billion. Making it a total of 12.04 billion. But Abakiari, the real president of the zoo called Nigeria, fell ill. Let me go by what they're saying officially. They said they're taking him to Gwabalada Hospital. Gwabalada Hospital have not received from the government up to 100 million naira. But these same people that jailed Ojo Zokalo, that put Olisametu in jail, claiming that they are fighting corruption, claiming that they are, they are the ones to sanitize society, these same people stole 12.04 billion. The late Buhari and his family, Aisha and the son, who is the fourth richest man in Africa, uh, Yusuf or whatever his name is. Abba Kiyari, uh, Issa Funtua, Mama Ndaura, Buratai, they have stolen money, very clear and very neat. Very clear and very neat. Are they going to defend this? The answer is no. Not even the most ardent Janja weed can defend this. It is very clear. You appropriated money in a budget to equip Asorok to make it viable for your sickly 
Whoever is there, because Buhari is no longer there. Where is the money? Let us forget about the money they, they appropriated for themselves in 2020. I am asking them about the money they claim they spent on Asso Rock. These are the people of integrity. ABC. 3.94 billion. 3.87 billion. Yoruba media will not hear this. Tinubu's paper, the nation will not write this. But it is here. And black and white. Appropriated. Stolen from the central bank. Where is the money? What did you buy with this in Asorok? Now they are moving them all over the place. Saying we are going to Babylon. We are flying him to Lagos. These are the people that stole money. And I ask you this evening. Why is Oju Zokalo in Kujie prison? Serving, is it 12 years? Why is Olisa Metu in prison for 400 million naira only? Serving 7 years. Why? Because they failed to realize that in Nigeria, every politics is local. You take care of your people. That is why my concern is Biafrans first. Now, do you see it? I am not saying that um, MEF and Central Bank gave somebody money. This was contained in their budget. They budgeted for this money. You will see them, they will, they recently, of course, it's Jubril. You will stand there and, and uh, uh, trying to form late Buhari's um, accent. He will try. He will say, uh, for, uh, for um, uh, in my clinic at Hassel Rock, uh, we are budgeting uh, 3.87 billion. Where is it now? What did you buy with 3.87 billion? If you go to Asorok Clinic, it's empty. Now tell me who is corrupt in Nigeria. Tell me those that needs to go to jail in Nigeria. These very figures, I will give it to the British. Not minding what they are going through. I want to prove to the world that nobody, no group of people is more corrupt than Fulani. They are the most corrupt, useless and primitive and backwards. That's why you're all suffering. That is why everybody is suffering. Their primitivity and backwardness, that is what we are suffering. That is why there are no good hospitals. That is why I pray to Chukuki Kadeba in heaven to give us the common sense to follow these very simple guidelines that we must survive this as a race. Who is going to airlift aid to us now? USA is on lockdown. All the airlines are on lockdown. They said they brought masks for you from, from China. Good luck to you if you want to wear their mask from China. I say good luck to you. It was China that gave the world this very virus. You don't wear anything from them. If you do, you will die. Try it and see. I will come back and I will say, I want you not to. People have been planning to depopulate. They don't want to colonize Africa. They want to kill us off and take over Africa completely and totally. This could be one of the ways they intend to do it. This virus is very, very different. It's not like the Spanish flu that came in, in, in 1918. Nothing you have ever seen before. This guy is deadly. People are afraid of HIV AIDS. This is the big daddy. Some people may have built up sufficient immunity to fight it. But those who have very weak immunity, you stand no chance. You stand no chance. For civilized, advanced economies to roll back freedoms that they have cherished for thousands of years is not something they will do lightly. Not something they, they don't have the herd mentality as you have in the zoo. They don't have it. That is why we must be very, very careful. And I will continue to say that initially, tonight, I am announcing that a contingency fund of 50 million from IPOB that will go into making sure we have some hospitals ready. As soon as people respond, to our appeal, back home especially, then we will be able, we'll of course, see these very funds rise significantly. But IPOB, as a family worldwide, we never knew this was coming. Nobody knew it was coming.
Nobody knew. So, as you all know, we have commitments all over the place. We have international lawyers in four continents. We are fighting very hard, as some of you may have known. You saw the statement that I issued yesterday. It was carried by every major news outlet all over the world. And the projection is that that very piece of damning human rights violations by Nigeria will be read by 85 million people. We have the proof and I'll show it to you on Sunday. So we are making serious headway. It's costing us a fortune, but we are making serious headway. IPOB this evening I'm announcing towards this very pandemic. We are committing 50 million Naira initially to make sure we educate and um, prepare ourselves for what is to come. 50 million will be made available for us to tackle coronavirus in Biafra land. For now, that is, we hope our budget initially is 300 million to be able to cater for it because most of the nurses and the doctors that will work, we know that the zoo will not pay them because there is no money, they've all run away. Uh, Abakiad is not there. And as he was flying, as he was running away, he took Jubril with him. Jubril ran with him. So there is nobody. I'm even sure those that you're seeing claiming presidency, they all have corona, all of them. So there is nobody. Senate have they've, all, they've disappeared. House of Reps disappeared. And I'm also asking the governors, please, as I said, no hostilities. I have, for the period of this very epidemic, not should I say pandemic, the period of this very scourge, we are sheathing our, our swords, all of us. Uh, I appeal to the governors to please, now that the banks are still working to pay workers their salaries, please. Whatever you're owing them, if you do not have money to pay workers, please try and pay them from your security vote. Very, very important that you pay them from your security vote. Very, very important, please. Very, very critical that you do so. From your security vote, you can pay them. I want, we are asking, pleading, and I can say I want, in the spirit of this new found um, um, together or something, we'll get through this virus. I'm appealing to the governors to please pay salaries. I'm also appealing to, to private companies to try and pay workers their salaries so that people can have something to feed the family with at this very period. People are saying stock up, stock up, stock up. Anyway, but I grew up uh, at a time when fridge was nothing anyway. If you have anything, you put it in the amp or you hang it over the fireplace. So uh, in this era of um, Indomie and the refrigerator, um, those who are in charge of NEPA, still call it NEPA, should at least ensure that there is um, a semblance of, um, of um, constants in terms of power supply that people can have their fridge um, of least up and running and be able to stock food there as well and other perishable um, um, items that they may have. As I said, we will equip some hospitals. Uh, the difficulties we are having now is with this whole coronavirus uh, problem, how are we going to fly these equipment? Um, um, USA is placing on order, I think about 10,000 uh, ventilators rather, um, and uh, also UK is placing on order, I think about 15,000 ventilators. So if, if the UK has no ventilator and the US has no ventilator, Spain has none, where are we going to get them from? This is the reason why we ask people, we want a country that is viable. We want a civilized country that is viable. You won't understand it. Now it has come. I think they said that Innocent said he can, Innocent Moto said he can um, build ventilators. So we'll speak to Innocent about it, about building ventilators and see how much he's going to charge for that. We must make sure that we have our hospitals ready um, in, in, in Benin. We have a hospital in Asaba. At least, uh, Delta is very big, so we'll have to, we'll have to find a hospital also in Wari to accommodate people. We need a hospital. It, most places are going to be two, actually. We need a hospital in, or in Orca, and we also need a hospital in Onisha. I don't know how we're going to do this. This 50 million is not going to be enough, but we're going to do the best we can. We are IPOB. Once we have a project, we always fund it. That's the good thing about us. We always do. So that's exactly what we're going to do. This 50 million naira is an initial pledge from IPOB coffers. Not gotten from anybody from IPOB purse itself. That is where these funds are coming from. I expect the DOS to be able to be able to to make preparations for food distribution 
to the poorest families in Biafra land. Food distribution will be done to the poorest families. And uh, we also need to make sure that the source of food supply is secured. That is the problem. We, nobody knows how long this whole thing is going to last. We pray it goes over next week. In which case, then everything is fine. We go back to normal. But how about if it continues? Then what happens? We don't want to be like the zoo that never plans ahead. We want to be able to plan ahead, please. As I said earlier, we are going to suspend all manner of hostilities and then to work with those who are willing to make sure that our people are fed and that they stay safe during this very period. We must take every advice very, very seriously, please. I beg of you. Every shred, every piece of advice we get we must take very, very seriously because things are happening. Things are happening. Let me warn you as to why our hospitals will need to be open because most of the doctors will need to pay, not to pay them full salary, but to give them something um, um, to keep them going and also the nurses as well. As I said, 50 million is not enough, but that is just a beginning. That is what IPOB is pledging in order to be able to, to tackle this very menace. The hospitals in the zoo, they are closing down. I don't know if some of you are aware of this. I don't know if you are aware of this. Because let me also warn you. Let me also warn very critically about what is being said. I must warn people very, very clearly. The world, in fact, no, it's not what, the, 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 um, the Ethiopian, highly regarded Ethiopian prime minister have said that he is worried for Africa. He is worried for Africa. This may take time. Remember, we are now saying it doesn't. He was not going to come to Africa. It was in China since November of last year in China. But the Western world, Europe, and America is now feeling the heat in March of 2020. How many months? November, December, January, February, March. Four months. Then I got it. Because people traveled to China, they came back, there was no flight ban, there was no restriction, you did as you liked, and now look at where we are. We don't want to go through this same mess again. We don't want to go through it in Africa because we are poor in Africa. Because in Africa, in all honesty, uh, the hygiene is not that great. Because also in Africa, it is overcrowded, you have slums, you have people that do menial jobs that have to survive on a day-to-day -day basis. That is why such people, in fact, indeed, all of our people need protection and we must do everything we can to protect them. We must do everything we can to protect them, please. Because this is the news coming from the zoo. They are shutting down their hospitals. Their hospitals are closing down because the doctors themselves are going on self-isolation because they don't have the gear, they don't have the kit to cover themselves to do the work. Two doctors died in New York looking after uh, sick coronavirus patients. We don't want anything to happen to our doctors in Biafra land either, but we need to make sure that we get them the right protective gear to enable them to at least keep the hospitals open. It is very, very important they do that, please. Very, very critical. They have. I'm, what I'm telling you is actually a fact. Let me read the news for you, please. Hospital shuts down major operations due to coronavirus as doctors embark on self-isolation. I'll read it for you. The University Hospital in Ibadan, or your state, has suspended key services due to the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. The suspension of consultation services to regular outpatients was announced by the Chief Medical Director of the hospital, Jesse Otebayo, on Wednesday. Mr. Otebayo said other departments in the hospital will also stop rendering services till further notice. Tell me how we're going to survive. Is it the telephone services that you have? Is there any hotline anywhere you can call if you're sick? They said it is a NASD, whatever. If they have eaten all the money meant for Asoro Clinic at the seat of power itself, what makes you think that this so-called, is it uh, NCCD or whatever rubbish is called, is going to be there to respond on time to your needs and to your concerns? That is why we need to do this. That is why IPOB needs to set up to the plate. And that is why we need to do everything we can within our power to safeguard the lives of our people. The lives of Biafrans is most paramount. 
And when they start to deny in said, okay, you know, there's something wrong. They said, Buhari not on ventilator. Nobody asked them. They came out and said, oh, Buhari is not on ventilator. Did anyone ask you? You know, this thing about this God we worship is that he's miraculous. And he has never failed me and can never fail. You will see what will happen to the zoo. The, their real president is off, off the grid. Now, nobody asks Lai Muhammad is saying that uh, Buhari is not on ventilator. Did anybody ask you if Jibril is on ventilator? From their mouth, they, they will confess. You watch and see what is going to happen. And then you come back and say that I told you so. I don't, I, I don't wish anybody ill in the zoo. But you see those in Asorok that ordered the death of Biafrans. Order the invasion of my house. The slaughter at Mpo. National High School. Aba. Head bridge on nature. In Asaba. In Enugu. In Igwocha. In Mbama. In Akwaibom. May coronavirus ravage all of them. In this life and in the next. All of them. You will see what will happen to the zoo. There is no answer. There is nobody there now. Only here is presidency. Oh, we congratulate one Pentecostal thief for, for his 50th birthday. That's all they now do. There is nobody speaking. If you go, if you, if you turn on your generator, because I know there's no light, turn on your, go and check. You will see every head of state around the world that is not ill with this very virus. You will see them standing and speaking to the people. Almost an early, even Hong Kong, Singapore, they call back all their MPs. They don't wear any tie to show you the, the, the urgency of it. Even when I first in South Africa, everybody speaks the most populous country in Africa. Where is the person you claim is your president? They said he is he tested negative that Jubril doesn't have it. Then where is he? In a time of national crisis and emergency, where is he to give direction and purpose? Let Jubril stand up and tell as Trump has been tell as uh, Boris Johnson has been doing. Tell the world how many ventilators you are going to purchase. Tell the world how many hospitals that are open. Tell the world the figures, the projection from the statisticians and all the experts. Come stand up and say it. He cannot. It's, it's a COVID-19 virus. That's all. And today, even ordinary COVID-19 virus, you don't hear anymore. And people are pretending as if life is normal. Do you see why Africa is, is rubbish and backwards? There is nobody to speak. Because the linchpin, the Didier, the, 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 the man, the Odegaard Obo, is down. Abakiyadu. He is the puppet master. And he's down. Now they are so confused. They don't longer know what I say. When I say that Abba Kiari is the one running the zoo, you did not believe me. Now he's out of the way. Tell me they're not in disarray. They are all in disarray. Now, like Mohammed, but he's not on ventilator. Let him come out and speak. Let uh, okay, he's Buhari. come out and speak. Now let's see. He cannot speak. Because he his contract was two hundred and fifty million dollars. Now he has gotten what he bargained for. And as I told people a while ago, once you go into Asorok, you will either die in Asorok or you lose somebody very close to you. Go and check them from the that present regime. And I warned Jubilee, if you don't take time, you will die there. Abak Yari, if you don't take time, you will die there. Anybody who goes into Asorok, either you die, your wife or your close relative. Go and check from the Bangida that moved into Asorok till this very day. It's a fact. Our priority is to defend their friends. Anything the zoo likes, it can do, but the zoo cannot defend you. In a time of crisis, in America, they're sending checks to people, sending out, they, they agreed a stimulus package of $2 trillion. Japan, $500 billion. Everybody doing something. You can, I'm a proud Nigerian. What has Nigeria done for you now that you're in a big, ugly mess? Nothing is to tell you, oh, don't, don't go out, don't do anything, don't travel, but they cannot take care of you. But IPOB will we'll do our best. We are not saying we can provide all the solutions to the problem, but we are going to do the best we can. That is why we are here. That is why we are here. To be our brother's keeper, and that's what exactly what we are going to do. All the way from Edo, because you have been people who are in IPOB. All the way from Edo, to cross river 
we are going to do the best. This family of IPOB, we now we want to prove to the world that indeed Elohim is with us. You some of you doubt it before, isn't it? We now I'm now going to prove to you that God is with that God is with IPOB. I'm, I'm going to prove it to you in the next few weeks. You will see it, then you will believe. Only then I'm sure that you're going to believe. Your pastors are not going to save you. I, I believe in the prayers that they are praying. You can pray in whatever language, in whatever tone that you like. That's entirely between you and your God. That's between you and your God. But these are the things that we need to do. We must be clean. Friends, to touch your face. Always wash your hands. You must go and get sanitizer. If not, I'm sure that your friends are developing uh, healthy sanitizers right now. Using Dettol. Dettol is a very good sanitizer because you can see on Dettol, on the can itself, and on ordinary Dettol uh, bottle or ISO, you can see it there. It kills coronavirus. It's there. It's written. Clean, wipe surfaces and keep it very, very clean, please. Please, keep it very, very clean. We don't want our elderly or vulnerable um, 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 citizens of Biafra to fall prey to this very virus. We do not need it. We are live and we are direct. I think I've gone over the time. I said I was going to be on air for only an hour. But it is very, very important that our food distribution system is secured. We don't need any criminality. We don't need fools running around all over the place looking to make life more difficult for people. We don't need that. We don't need it. What we need is consistency. Consistency in terms of people going out to show that they care. We need to prove to our people that we are IPOB. We have come to make their lives better. We have come to make Biafra a better place for everybody. Not just this generation, but those unborn. That is our legacy. That is why I say that before us, there was none like us. Now that we're here, there can never be any. Nobody can rise up and spend their time and say, we are taking care of our people. But you said that you have billionaires, trillionaires, multi, everything you can think of. That it has called, fallen to those they call miscreants to save our people. And it is a burden we must bear with pride. And this IPOB will save Biafra from this very scourge, from this very coronavirus. Please do exactly as you are told. Do exactly as you're told. No shining of shoes by Fulani Janjaweed. No shining of shoes. Because they'll bring it from the from, from Fulani North and bring it down to, to contaminate our people. Don't cut your nails from these people. Don't let them shine your shoes. Very, very important. If you have sense, you will understand it. Don't. Don't. I repeat, don't. They will do everything they can to decimate our population. Please do not maintain the highest forms of hygiene and please await further instructions from us. That brings us to the end of our program. Very brief emergency program this very day. As I, I, I told some of you, but you, you didn't believe me, but I think maybe let me just add this news. For, it's, from, it's from Reuters, actually. Nigerian army prepares for coronavirus lockdown and mass burials. Nigerian army. Do you trust them? They prepare for coronavirus lockdown because there is no more abakiari. In the absence of abakiari, it will be martial law. This this same um, coronavirus is a two-edged sword. It has taken out the, the cabal, more or less, weakened and incapacitated the cabal, but it has given Burata a power. Burata will say, after all, in Britain, uh, the army is there helping, and in other places around the world. This is what the Flannies are planning for you. It's for those you stupid. That's a little man who was um, running his mouth. We'll deal with that fool later. Not now. Let me read the news for you from Reuters. The Nigerian army is preparing to listen carefully to forcibly transfer the sick to hospital and enforce curbs of movement to try to shield the country from crime. Forcibly army. Army, not police. Not civil defense. Not paramedics. No army. And you're telling me that you're in a country <laughs> that has humans in them. I shouldn't be laughing, actually. It's a very serious uh, business. People are dying. I shouldn't be. I do apologize. I do apologize. People are dying all over the world. And it's very, very painful. And we are praying for them and their families all over the world, please. A memo from Army Headquarters. Listen to me very, very carefully to what they said. Following the rise and continuous spread in cases of the coronavirus disease, 
in Nigeria, the chief of army staff has deemed it necessary for all to take protective measures to ensure the safety of the army personnel and their families. There are currently 46 confirmed cases in Nigeria because there's no testing. They don't test. Do they have a testing kit? If America is running out of testing kit and UK, where are they going to get their testing kit from? From who, I ask? Is it going to be from China? The same people that will even add the... Uh, you know, coronavirus, this is the second variant. Maybe they add the third variant in it and give you. And they, they, they puncture your skin and that will be it. No vaccine of any sort. If you take it, you're gone. No vaccine of any corona until it is developed and fully certified by the western world anything coming from the east please don't accept it i'm warning you now i'm warning you now they said the army is um suspending everything they are also going to um take over all the food that they can find the nigerian army in order to keep the army going they'll tell you it is the army and who are who are the army it's boko haram do you see the mess that nigeria is in that is why anybody who refers to him or herself as a nigerian I see as one compound fool, one giant fool. But not dear friends, not this very family, not IPOB. We pray that Elohim to cook a car, Biama will continue to guide, protect, and shield every dear friend wherever you are, especially those in China, the IPOB family in China, the IPOB family in Turkey, the IPOB family, even in Iran, the IPOB family in Israel. The IPOB family in Italy, the IPOB family in France, the IPOB family in the UK, the IPOB family in the United States of America. These are monumental hotspots and we pray for each and every one of you. And we must also remember those back home. And as I said, 50 million is just the beginning. We hope to increase that as the days go on. But as always, we must not forget what we are here to do, which is to restore Biafra. And that we will continue to do. Nothing is going to stop us. That is why we say that Biafra is our religion here on radio. Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim is our God. From me, from here, it is good evening.